This is our church building, the Church of St Mary's Stake. It's been around for nearly a thousand years and it sits on top of a hill surrounded by beautiful countryside. Quite a bit has changed recently. We used to walk to and from the church on an uneven cobbled path. It was very tricky to go up hill and downhill, especially on dark, wet nights. A few years ago, a very kind person left us a legacy, a field. And so in 2017, we were able to afford to build new, safer paths with lighting, a handrail, and also a new accessible car park at the back of the church. We call this phase one of our building project. We'll talk more about the other phases later. Let's walk up to the church now and meet the Reverend Sarah Jane Stevens, our vicar. Welcome to St Mary's Church, Thacombe, where you're going to see the church as it is now and hear the vision of how it's going to be, hopefully in the next 12 months. We want to take this beautiful historic building as it is now and future-proof it so that your great-great-grandchildren can look and see what you have contributed to in making this building um, an accessible place, an inspiring place for worship, for the community, making it so that it lasts another few hundred years. It's been here for longer than any of us. Let's keep that going. Unfortunately, specialist investigations carried out recently have shown problems to be more widespread than we'd thought. Therefore, repairs will swallow far more of our available funds than we could have anticipated. Some repairs carried out with good intent in previous generations will have to be redone because materials and methods used then have made damp problems worse. Let's now go through the porch and into the church. We have horrible cold drafts here in the winter and we plan to add a second glazed door at the entrance as well as a heat curtain to keep warm air in and more of that later. As we enter, let's think about how things were when the church was new. In the 12th century, there were no pews and services consisted of a Latin mass. The porch was added between the 14th and the 16th centuries, and it was there that weddings and baptisms were held. In the 16th century, when services started to be held in English and sermons became commonplace, pews were installed for the congregation and a pulpit for the preacher and also some galleries for musicians and singers. Galleries were removed in the Victorian age and choir stalls added. Also, a very small vestry used to prepare for services was built at the back of the church. The way we use our church building has changed over the years and our needs from this building are different compared with those in previous centuries. Today we live a bit longer and quite naturally with age are less mobile. And what we need from our church building is accessibility for people of all ages and all abilities. And the way we worship, our language, our music style, we use contemporary as well as traditional styles here in Thacombe. And this rich variety is a great joy. And for these reasons, we need a more flexible space, particularly at the front of the church. We need to make space for people in wheelchairs or mobility aids, families with children, buggies and prams, as well as making room for our musicians and singers. We also need to make it easier for people to hear and see what's going on at the front of church. A more flexible space is really what we would like. This is a slightly delicate problem. We have no toilets or baby change areas at the church and we find this extremely difficult and inconvenient. An accessible car park without accessible toilets to match is particularly embarrassing. So what are we going to do about all that? Well, we remain so very grateful for the generous legacy that paid for phase one of this project. That is the accessible car park and flat access path to the church and the new and improved steps up from the main road. The legacy will also help us to do many, but not all, 
of the other things that we now need to complete. Here is our plan. It's in phases. Phase one was the building of the new path and the accessible car park. In phase two, we plan to repair all the damaged external stonework from around the body of the church. But we'd also like to build a new extension. That will involve installing new drainage and water supplies because we want to have toilets in the church, one accessible and one with baby changing facilities. We also need a new vestry and a new boiler. Thanks to the generous legacy, we expect to have sufficient funds for this work to be done. And we plan to start work on phase two in September 2020 and finish in the spring of 2021. After that, in phase three, we'd like to install a beautiful glazed door at the front of the church. We will relocate some pews to create a more flexible space at the front of the church and we'll move the font. We will redecorate the church and install new lighting, under pew heating and new audio-visual equipment. Phase four includes all the external stonework repairs that are needed to the tower. We'll build a new mezzanine level for bell ringing and a kitchenette at ground level. With funds made available, phases three and four could be completed by autumn 2021. How will we raise funds for the work in phases three and four? Well, we don't expect this to be easy, particularly in the current economic climate caused by COVID-19. These are challenging times and we continue to support our community through these difficulties. But to be good stewards of the money that has already been given to us, we believe we should also continue with these building works. We always pray to God for help and we believe that by applying for grants, looking to the local community for donations and contacting all those with connections to the church, that we should be able to collect all that is needed to complete this project. To start off the fundraising, I will be cycling the entire length of the South Downs Way to raise funds. Please would you think and pray about how you might be able to help. Every pound towards this fundraising effort will go to preserving our building for future generations and ensuring that our community space and our worship space is accessible to all. Please do think and pray about it. God bless you.